بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن اهتدى بهداه يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد إخوة الكرام Dadka horay fadhi yaadad kala duwan oo badan ku ma jiraan marka ma loo Soomaaliya loo Soomaaliya waa waa badan aad ayaa ku raadsan okay um What I will do, inshallah, to be fair, I will do the lecture now in Somali. And then after Isha, I will mix English and Arabic. How does that sound? With the same topic. Huh? It's too late. What time is, what time is your Isha? 11 o'clock. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Ittafaqat al-Arab wa Allah tattafaq. Naam. Naam. طيب أن أقدم الإنجليزية ولا أقدم الصومالية؟ ها؟ ها؟ الصومالية أيوة ثم تقرين ما شاء الله طيب أن what we gonna do إن شاء الله let me give the time we have is 50 minutes isn't it till Isha 50 minutes we make it half 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 in Somali and the second half in English huh? English first <laughs> خلاص خلاص we'll do the Somali and then we'll do the إن شاء الله ها الإنجليزي أول أوكي يا أي أوكي فدي فدي على مني طيب we'll do the English first and in the second 25 minutes we'll do it in Somali okay agreed ونحتسب إن شاء الله الجلوس على الله تبارك وتعالى أن يرحمنا به all praise to Allah سبحانه وتعالى and peace and blessings upon his beloved Prophet alayhi salatu wassalam. My reflect brothers and elders and youngsters. The reminder of today was about to be kind to your parents in the Friday ceremony. And we discussed the importance of respecting our parents and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the smallest letter in Arabic showing irritation that should not be shown to our parents. And how this topic is serious 
it shows you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put it after ashirk billah after making a part with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he asked our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about the things that destroys the person the first that he brought it ashirku billah making a partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then said alayhi salatu wa wa uququl walidain and disobeying our parents and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبِدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّهُ and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordained not to be worshipped except him subhanahu wa ta'ala وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانَ and be kind to your parents then after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the importance of being kind to, to your parents in general he mentioned in particular situation in particular time that you need to take care of them. When is that? When they still powerful and strong? Nah. They do not need you. They do not need you. If one of them reads the old age aw kilahuma or both of them fala taqul lahuma uff do not show any irritation any kind of irritation that you are not happy about what they are saying to you if you show that then you are in danger By our youngster saying, when their father or mother calls them, when they are chit chatting with their friends, when they are busy on the internet, when they are watching a nice program, when they are watching our boys, when they are watching football, mind you, against Man City, whatever, and then you find them, oh, what do you want now? That's the way we reply to our parents. What? All these the words that we use towards them. What? What do you want now? And that's very, very, very serious. We should be very careful. And if they got upset with you, or if they get a little bit in their heart, you had it. You lost it. That's why our, our Prophet said in the authentic hadith, Rahim al Anfu, he's a loser. And indeed, he is a loser. Whoever reads, his parents, both of them, or one of them in an old age, and they do not take him to paradise. In another narration, which is authentic too, in another hadith, I mean, sorry, not narration, another hadith, authentic, from, from your Prophet, وسلم, he said, the Jannah is beneath underneath their feet فَثَمَّةً جَنَّةً The narration of Al-Jannah تحت أقدام الأمهات is weak The Jannah is the beneath the, the under the mother's feet that narration is weak but this one is authentic فَثَمَّةً جَنَّةً There is the paradise 
under the, the, the feet of your parents. That if you want a paradise, we need to earn it. Paradise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dealt with it as a business. Allah said, Inna Allah ishtara. It's buying and selling. It's a business. You need to earn it. You need to work for it. Now, if I say, I want to become the richest man in Birmingham, but I don't want to do anything, I want to sit on my phone in a Rahman Mosque, and I'm going to do a lot of adhkar and a lot of tasbih, and I'm going to raise my hands to my Lord, and I'll be the richest man in Birmingham. He will say, Come on, man, you're stupid. What are you talking about? The sky does not rain gold and silver. The sky does not rain gold and silver. You need to earn it, you need to work for it, you need to get up and get up and do some work and collect your money, put your money together, invest your money somewhere, do some things, then you, become, then you might become the richest man in the end. And when it comes to paradise, we don't want to do that. And we say, in Allah Ghafur Rahim, Allah is the most kind, is most merciful, Allah is the most kind, Allah is most forgiving, Allah, Allah, Allah. We need to earn our Jannah. That's why Yubha Sallam said in the authentic hadith in Tirmidhi, Ala sil'at Allah al-ghaliya, Ala sil'at Allah al-jannah. Sil'a is a business. And it's expensive. It's expensive. Ala sil'at Allah al-jannah. Allah's stuff is paradise. And you need to earn it. And the doors, our parents, are two doors of doors of paradise. And if you look, the Salaf and the way they used to take care of their parents, you get amazed. You get amazed. You all know. The hadith of Sahih Muslim, the hadith of Uwais ibn al Qaran. Uwais ibn Amr al Qaran. Everybody knows. Our Prophet said to Umar, if you get hold of that man, ask him to pray for you, Umar. Umar, and Umar we know who is Umar, it's not somebody like me and you, it's one of the men that Abu Salam said, he's one of the men of paradise, he is the one, Abu Salam said in the authentic hadith, if there were a prophet after me, was going to be Umar, but there's no prophet after me. Umar, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with the truth in his tongue, and the Quran, and he agreed with the Quran in a lot of positions. Our Prophet is saying, if you get hold of that man, ask him to pray for you and ask Allah for forgiveness for you. Who is this man? A man even who is not a companion. Who is not one of the Sahaba of the Prophet He is not one of those who did the jihad, who fight with the Prophet who got injured like Khalid bin Wali. There was no position in his body except it 
was stuck. There was no position in his body. He's not none of that. How did he become that important? What made him to become that important and that valuable? Because he was kind to his mother. And our Prophet he gave exact description. He said he is from Yemen, from the tribe of Murad, then the sub branch of Balqarn. He used to have a burst with his disease on the skin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cured him, except the position of the circle in his body. He prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep that for him, that to remember and to be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you see, and he had, he got a mother, and that mother, she is the one who caused him not to become a Sahabi. Because he could not leave his mother and come to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then whenever the flu of, Mac uh, of Yemen comes, Umar he asks, is there a ways, is a ways amongst you? The people they are looking for somebody who is important. And then one of the group of the Hajj, they said, yes. He said, where is he? He said, he's our shepherd. He's looking after the, the, the goats and, and the camels of the, and, uh, for the Hajj, for the, for the Hadi and uh, for, for the Hajj. What do you mean from him? He has no value. He's not that important in the community. He's not a big man, famous like me. No. He's not. And then, he said, I want him. Then he went, and then he asked him the way the Prophet ﷺ prescribed. Are you from this? Are you from this? Are you from that? Do you have this problem? Do you have this skin disease? And Allah, Allah cured you, accept this. And, and you, you got a ma mother, you've been uh, very kind to her. He said, yes, 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 yes. He said, pray for me, Allah, to forgive me. <coughs> what? Allah, pray for me, Allah, to forgive me. He said, you are the companion of the Prophet you are the one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you the glad tidings of being the people of paradise while you are walking on this um, uh, alleys of um, uh, Makkah. What are you talking about? He said, pray for me, Allah to forgive me. Because I've heard Allah's prophet saying this. The matter is not if and but. I've heard Prophet Salim saying this, and he told me if you get hold of this man, ask him to pray for you for forgiveness. And then he prayed for him. And he said, Where are you going? He said, I'm going to Kufa. He said, Shall I write for you to the governor of Kufa? If it was me or you, what you were going to say? Why not? I need to be looked after. I need to be looked after. The governor of Kufa will look after me. Will give me a privilege. Will give he will give me the, to stay the best place and the best accommodation, and he will look after me. But always is different. He said, no. To be part of the layman 
is preferable for me. I don't want to be known. I don't want to be famous. This is the life hereafter. It's for those who does not want any higher status in this world. And they do not want to spread the mischief in this world. This man, then he went back to Yemen. And one of the wealthy people of Yemen went with a group in the Hajj. And then he met Umar. And Umar told him, if you get hold of this man, ask Allah, let him pray for you for forgiveness. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not reject his dua. His dua is straight, it's guarantee. And then the man came back to Yemen looking for ways Ibn Amr al qarni from every corner until he get hold of him and he said pray for me Allah to forgive me he said what you just came back from Hajj you are better than me you are this you are that he said no pray for me Allah to forgive me he said it again he said no pray for me Allah to forgive me and then he said have you met Omar Have you met Omar? He said, yes. He said, ah, understood. And then he prayed for him. And then as soon as the people find out about him, he ran away. He ran away. And this man reached that level because he was kind to his mother. The brothers, especially our youth, we should respect our parents. We should look after them. We should be kind to them. And as I mentioned in the khutbah, Muhammad ibn Munkadir, one of the greatest tabi'een, one of the a'imma of this deen, His older brother used to pray his night prayers and he was giving a massage to his mother. And he said, by Allah, I do not want to sweat with that. Night prayers. And that's why Sheikh Abu Ishaq al Huwaini said, when I read the hadith of Ibn Abbas in the Adab al-Mufrad, when a man came to him and he said, Oh, the cousin of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, I killed. I killed a woman. What shall I do? Then he asked him, Do you have a mother? Do you have a mother? Do you have a mother? And then he said, No, my mother passed away. Then he advised him to do other, to work out on your, for Allah to forgive you and uh, sadaqah and so on and dua and everything. And then the intelligent student of Ata ibn Abi Rabah, the student of Ibn Abbas, he asked him, O oh, cousin of the Prophet, what is this to do with the killing? You ask him about his mother. What is his mother to do with the killing? And then he replied, because there is no action that I know 
more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than pleasing your mother? He said, I don't know. There is no action. That's why, especially like me and some other elderly brothers who their parents are still alive, we should always keep in touch with them. We should always talk to them. We should call them on a regular basis. If you can call them every day, ask them in the morning, how was their night? Ask them in the evening, how was their day? Few pounds won't hurt you, even if they're abroad. But if they die and they are happy with you and they are pleased with you, Then, and you do your salah and your zakat and your fasting, then inshallah you will enter paradise without any problem. We need to work hard on that, brothers. The second part of the topic is what after their death? Our youngsters. Alhamdulillah, most of their parents are still alive. And they can get that opportunity for being nice to them, talking to them, happy. And sometimes, buying your mom little thing, especially with our youngsters, when you are coming home, Buy your mom some sweet. One chocolate of 50p, you may gain the happiness of your mom. A little flower, but not for the deaf one, huh? not for the white one, be careful. And also, Maliman, let me give you a little bit. You, you, you've been listening and you, there was no one. Uh, the topic was quite heavy. And also, Maliman, who is married to a white lady, she got sick. And she was in the hospital. And he was trying. He's a Bedouin like me. Straight away from the camel. And he tried to be moderate and he went to buy some flowers and then he bought the flowers for the death <laughs> and then he came running to his old lady and he passed it to her and she said oh you want to get rid of me? You want to get rid of me? He said, no. So what is this? Then why? <laughs> okay. Do not buy that one for your mom. Then she Googles. She has Google is available now. Even if she's like me, but when she can Google it and then she can find out the white ones for the death. Oh, son, you want to get rid of me? then you'll be in trouble. But buy her some reddish ones, nice ones. Buy her something, always try. <laughs> try to make her happy. Try to make your father happy. When father instructs, instructs you in something, do it immediately. Do it immediately. If he told you, read your Quran, do it immediately. If he told you to do in, uh, some of your homework, do it immediately. And as soon as you finish, come back and say, Dad, I did it. He will be so happy. And if he dies on that day, then your paradise is guaranteed. 
then the Yankees, they should take care of that. <laughs> the second point is, after their death, everything is finished? Is that all? No. A man came to the Prophet wasallam from Bani Salama. And he was a good man, as Ibn Hajar mentioned. He used to look after his parents properly. And then he said, after their death, is there any good left for me to do for them? That means he used to do the good work for them. They died, and they were so happy with him. Now, what, what our Prophet said, As-salatu alayhina. Making dua for your parents. How many brothers, their father passed away? Can you raise your hands? Allahu Akbar. Okay, second question. How many of us prays for them every salah? Zakallahu khayr. Zakumullahu khayr. Zakumullahu khayr. Every salah. Remember your parents. Every salah. Especially when you are in sujood. Wakur rabbil hamhuma kama rabbiyani sabiyah. Wakur rabbil hamhuma kama rabbiyani sabiyah. Rabbi khfirli wal walidi. وَلِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ يَوْمِ يَقُومُ الْحِسَابِ الصلاة عليهم to pray for them every day and the hadith is authentic it's in Abi Dawood and Ibn Majah الصلاة عليهم والاستغفار لهم to seek Allah's forgiveness for them. Seek Allah's forgiveness for them. And Ibn Hajar rahimahullah, mentioned a beautiful statement after he mentioned and, uh, the hadith of istighfar after the salawat. When you finish your prayer, immediately we say, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. Why? You just finished Ibadah. Who can give me an answer? You just finished Ibadah. And you saying Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. Why? And not even once, three times. It's close to that. It doesn't have to be that you did something wrong in the salah. But sometimes even your mind might wander around Birmingham. You go to small, small heat and Stratford Road and you go right left center. Then you ask Allah Ta'ala for forgiveness for that little being of, of absent-minded or Whatever. Okay, that's that. When we come up from the toilet, you just finish your business and you say Ghufrana. What for? Huh? Being the toilet is not a sin. Leaving the toilet? I said, why? Why do you seek Allah's forgiveness? And you just came out from the toilet. You, you haven't have, done anything wrong. You don't have any alarm uh, to pray for Allah in the toilet. Yes. You did not have the chance or you are not allowed to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inside the toilet. Billahi alaykum. I'm asking you by Allah. If we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness for that little time, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the permission 
not to remember him. What do we do in our other times? Chit-chatting? On the internet? Talking about the other tribes? Fadi Kudir? Fitna book? Facebook called Fitna book? Twitter of Shaitan? WhatsApp of Iblis? We got all that. And we're busy. And we do not say Astaghfirullah after we finish. Please, brothers. Our Prophet said in the authentic hadith, and you all know in Bukhari and Muslim, Man jalasa fi majlisin, la yathkurullah fi, kana alayhi min Allahi tira. Ay? Hasratun wa nadam. Whoever sits in a place, doesn't have to be a seat. You can be standing chit-chatting. You can be sitting chit-chatting. You can be on the internet chit-chatting. Somebody at, at, at the end of the other part of the world. After we finish, do we remember to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? After we finish from, from the restaurants, after we hear the adhan, And we leave sitting in the cafe. Do we remember always to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Do we ask Allah for forgiveness? Do we remember Dua al Majlis? <coughs> What's Dua al Majlis? When you're still in a place and you finish from that madness, what are you supposed to say, brothers? Subhanakallah wa bihamdi, ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. You ask Allah for forgiveness, to forgive you from sitting in that gathering and that gathering is not gathering of sinning, it's a normal gathering, socializing. Even though sometimes we, we socialize too much. And the socializing sometimes might put you into more trouble. And might put us into more trouble. But we should avoid as much as we can. And, and let me squeeze the mashayikh a little bit as well. And it's not the manners of the people of the Quran and the people of knowledge and the students of knowledge Go down to sit in cafes. Never used to be their manners. Ahlaq da wadam ma'ah. Ahl ilmiga. Tullab ilmiga. Tullab ilmiga yar yar kuwa wa wain. Laqan kuwa da ma'ah ina makhayla faristan. Wada daw. Dibha la yisugun ma'ah. And I'm telling you this, I've seen some brothers who are practicing brothers, who are mashayikh, they give lectures to the, to the people, and they sometimes they come in the morning, you find them in the cafe, you go, you do, some, uh, you do your business, you come back in the evening, they're still sitting in the cafe. If they're sitting in the masjid, mashallah. That's where they should be. When you do your business, do your work, make your heart link to the mosque. Come to the mosque. And the mosque also should be a place for the youth, should be a place for our youngsters. They should have some entertainment. They can come, they can sit down, they can enjoy themselves, they can play whatever they want to play, and they come to pray in Allah's house. That should be their socializing. 
And if we did not provide that for them, somebody else will provide for them. And they, and you know, I don't need to mention it, what they could do and what they already doing with our youth. The third one, al istighfar al walidayn Seek Allah's forgiveness for your parents. The third one, the second one, that was the second one. What's the third one? Silatu ar rahim allati la tusalu illa bihima. Your kinship, your relatives, through your parents, you should look after them. You should be kind to them. You should do whatever you should do with them. And after their death, while they are alive, they are there for them. They tell you, send money to your uncle, send money to your auntie, send money to your cousin, send money to this. After their death, who's going to do that? Nobody. Nobody on your back. And let me mention a quite funny story. Some youngsters of the UK, their father always, whenever they ask, we need this game, we need Xbox, we need a PlayStation 3, we need this, we need that, we need we. He used to say, my mother is hungry, my mother is in need. I need to send some money to my mother. I need to send some money to my mother. They came back from school. And then their mother said, boys and girls, please keep quiet today and observe the silence in the house because your grandmother passed away. Your grandmother passed away. And after you eat, go to your rooms and behave yourselves. They went to their rooms, yes, and they start partying. The old lady gone. Now we, we, we're going to get our games and the things that we needed. And that shouldn't happen. We should not try to make that war. We should avoid that kind of war between the children and your parents and your relatives that you are supporting them. You say no. I will get for you when you finish your GCSEs, if you get a good mark, if you, if you do get a good mark in your Quran, if you finish your Quran, rewarding. But whenever they ask you something, you say, I'm going to send, it, send money to your grandma. Then they're going to say yes. And then we'll be in trouble. Then we, should, we should avoid that as well. Time is finished with, 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 with the English. And the last one, wa ikramu sadiqihima. Be nice and be generous and be kind to who? To their friends. The friends of your mother, the friends of your father. You all are aware from our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when his mother Halima Sa'diyah came to him what did he do with her? He put his rida on the floor for her and he set her on, on, on that and then they said that's his mother impressed feeling what about if, the, if, if she was his, his real mother? And what did he used to do with, his, with Khadija's friends? He used to do a lot with, her, with them as well. He used to slaughter the shark, the goat, and he used to give it to Khadija's friends. Once an old lady came to him, alayhi salatu wasalam, 
and then he put his top on the floor for her he set her on there he spoke to her nicely and then she went then the sahaba they got surprised he said prophet allah who is this woman you do all this for her he said this woman she used to come to us when Khadija was alive when Khadija was alive and Abdullah ibn Umar a group of Badwins they came they, they met him on uh, the suburbs of um, uh, of Medina and then he gave them but he gave them he gave extra to one of them he gave his imam he gave his uh, donkey that he used to uh, ride when he needs to rest and then they said the his students rahimakallah this is bedouin and little thing like the way you give the other ones is enough for them why do you do all this and then he said this man his father was a good friend of my father Umar. That's why I gave him extra. He gave him his donkey, he gave him his uh, imama, and he left without imama. Imagine. And the Sahaba, they were not like the sheikhs of uh, our sheikhs of today. That, what does the cover there have? They were different. It was shame. That's why when he saw Abdullah ibn Umar, when he saw his student Nafi at once praying without Imam inside the house, he said, Do you go out like this outside? He said, No. He said, Then you should not face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this style. And let me ask you the last question. Do we wear our best clothes when we are praying inside our houses? And top t-shirt which is falling apart. Sometimes people they can't do much about that. La hawla wa la And we should fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you are facing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you should wear your best clothes. Even if you are inside your house. When you are praying, when you are praying for your night prayers, wear your best clothes that you are, you, you, you're going to come out with. Dress properly. And face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jazakumullah khairan.